Hey everybody, Joe with Joe's Phenomenal here and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing a product review of the Vitamix E320 Explorian Blender combination that's sold at Costco. So are you ready? Then let's get into this. The bundle that you get from Costco comes with everything you see here. You get the main 2.2 horsepower blender base here that has variable speed control and also pulse control here. You got the 64 ounce pitcher here that has both standard and metric measurements on it. You get a tamper, you get two cups, and they both have screw on lids with a rubber seal. And you also get this thing called the personal cup adapter. What this is used for is the cups here can screw onto this and that takes the place of the pitcher. That way you can use this on the blender for the personal cups. The pitcher, the housing for the personal cup adapter, and the cups themselves are all made of BPA-free plastic. And the tamper here is made of plastic as well. To keep things tidy, if you look at the underneath here, on the underside of the blender base, you have a cable management system, which basically just consists of these plastic tabs that hold the power cord in. And when you're done using it, you can roll it back up, stick it in there, and then you don't have a cord hanging out any place. The name Vitamix has been synonymous with quality for the better part of 100 years. Everything on this is engineered and built in the United States, and it's all backed up with a great seven year full warranty, meaning that for seven years, everything is covered, including shipping both directions. So if you ever have anything go wrong with one of these, rest assured they will take care of it as long as it's within seven years. The blades down in the personal cup and in the pitcher are made of hardened stainless steel and the drive system connections both on the bottom of the pitcher and on the blender are all metal for maximum durability. If you get the Explorium blender from Costco, then it comes with all this stuff. However, that's exclusive to Costco. So if you get it any place else, you're gonna get your blender base here, neither red or black, and you're gonna get your pitcher, the top here, and the tamper. So we took a couple of days to run this thing through its paces, just so we would get a good idea of how well this thing works. We tested blending several things in the pitcher and also heating up some soup, seeing as how this is a hot and cold blender, just to see how well it did those tasks, as well as trying to make a few things exclusively with the personal cups, just to try to give you a nice thorough review. We'll start with these personal cups. Like I said before, these are made of plastic, but it's really good high quality plastic construction here. There's actually an outer layer and an inner layer. There's actually a little bit of air in between, so that gives you a little bit of an insulating effect on these. The lids are nice quality too. They got a good rubber seal, slides right on, nice and tight. And the top requires a little bit of pressure to pop open so you don't have to worry about this falling off. Here, a nice little snap when it's closed so it's not coming open. And it's got a little hook here to either carry it by or to hang it on something. However, this personal cup thing, I'm not so sure about this because I kind of feel like this design is a little bit weird and chunky. It's good quality and everything. It's got the metal drive system and everything else. It's put together very well, but I just think that the idea of it is a little bit weird and janky. I mentioned before that this is for the personal cup, so you can actually use these directly on your blender. But as you can see, you can't really put this on here and then put the cup on because if there's something in this cup, I'm gonna pour it out trying to put it into this. Just having this whole container area around here is just a little bit weird to me. Why, why couldn't they have just made a smaller attachment that you can just twist onto the top of the cup with the blade on it and then just kind of put it on there after the fact. What you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to take this heavy connector, pick it up, turn it upside down, twist this in here and just trying to kind of get it on right and it does take a little bit of time to get that on there. Turn the whole thing on here, blend, and then when you take this off, you've got all this here. I mean, it's not really a big pain in the neck to use or anything, but it's just kind of weird. Also, I needed to mention that trying to clean this thing after you use it is a big pain in the ass. Also with these cups, even though they look pretty big on the outside, they're actually pretty thin on the inside, and that's actually pretty narrow down there. So if you got big chunks of frozen stuff you're putting in here, they end up getting stuck about halfway like this, where they don't really go down all the way, so you end up having to break stuff up a little bit to fit down there, or you have to take smaller bits of stuff and get them down into the bottom first, otherwise you got a problem. Also, that narrow bottom makes it a little more difficult to clean the inside of the cup down near the bottom, and you end up being limited to only 20 ounces in these cups, even though they look larger. 
For our blending test, we went ahead and tried to make a strawberry smoothie, and as you can see, I've got to put this on upside down, just like I was telling you before. Get that on, flip it over, and we'll just turn this up high. If you, if you turn this down to low, you'll probably hear that too. It's going so slow that it's almost useless. So if you're anything lower than maybe five, at about a four or so, that's about as low as you want to run it. And all the way up is, I don't know how long I could stand having it this loud actually. Then once that's done, then you gotta turn this back over again, turn this back off, and you see there's stuff dripping? Well, you got this big clunky cumbersome thing. I'm already making a mess here. As you can see, I got stuff all over the place here along with the countertop just trying to get this off. The result on this smoothie, however, is pretty nice. It's blended really well, there's no chunks or anything in here. So this has done a good job in that respect. One thing to note though, I ended up having to put a little bit more liquid in here than I really wanted to, because I'd like to have gotten this a little bit thicker. But I did notice that if I had less liquid in there, things were getting stuck and there was no way to loosen them up without taking the entire thing apart and stirring stuff around. So I just alleviated that by just putting a little bit more milk in here. As far as the tamper goes here, I hate this. It's really cheap and flimsy. The last Vitamix I had was quite a while ago, but I remember these tampers were a lot better. They were heavier, they had a better grip on them. This thing kind of feels like going to a toy store and getting a toddler's plastic baseball bat. That's about what it feels like. Really light, really cheap, really thin. I've had other blenders that include these for a lot less money and I don't recall one ever being as bad as this but I was expecting a little bit more from Vitamix. Okay, now for the blender itself. The blender does not have a click-on lid. This is just held on with, with a couple of rubber tabs here, all rubber top. The top kind of twists right off and back on again. And really this just comes off to use that tamper. And when you put it back on, it just kind of snaps down closed. I'm not the biggest fan of this design, but it does work and the top isn't gonna come off. So I guess it's okay. Again, you got those hardened stainless blades in there and the metal gearing as well, so that's good. The pitcher itself is made of ABS plastic. Here you can see all the metric measurements and on the other side, you can see the standard measurements. For as much as these cost, I would have preferred a pitcher that was made out of glass, but Vitamix tells me they make all the pitchers from plastic for safety reasons. Still, I've seen plenty of blenders with glass pitchers and I don't ever recall hearing about a problem with any of those before but we're gonna have to take Vitamix's word for it on this one. As you can see with the base, it just has these four nubs and the pitcher just kind of sits right on it. So if you're blending something light, you're probably gonna to wanna to have your hand up on top here, otherwise this can move around and flop around off very easily. We didn't experience any problems with that, but all our blending we did in the testing was with a pretty full pitcher. As far as the base unit goes, you have on off, you have pulse and you have a variable speed control that works with both the pulse and with the regular controls. So you just turn that on and it starts the lowest speed, which is actually pretty loud and you can turn all the way up here. And that gets, that gets really, really loud. It's probably the loudest blender that I've ever heard. Let me come back down here. Which that's weird too, because if you see that, check this out. Hear that? That's... Ah, that's kind of weird, huh? It's not very smooth, it's just kind of... It kind of just picks up really fast like that. And if you look at the variable speed controls here too, this is kind of... It's really sort of janky. You see that right there? I can actually move the dial around a little bit. It doesn't seem to be affecting anything and everything still works, but 
I mean, we're talking about a $400 blender here, and that to me is a real weird quality thing. It just feels cheap. Now we have the same thing with the pulse, whereas you just kind of set your speed and you can pulse it. Up here, be a little louder. And up here, it'll be a lot louder and a lot faster. And with the pulse, it requires you to kind of hold that down. There's no timer or anything else you can set. If you let go of that, then it just stops. That's what this is for. Otherwise, you'd just be using the regular lever over here. By the way, if this is your first time here and you want to learn some cool new recipes, get some great cooking tips and tricks, and all sorts of other kitchen related things, then start now by subscribing to the channel and clicking the notification bell so you never miss a thing. Looking at the bottom of this thing, I mentioned how it's got this cable management system. These tabs here are really just thin plastic holding these in place. This does not really seem very durable. After you've coiled and uncoiled this 20, 30 times, I can't imagine that none of these tabs would break. Um, I'm not sure they would or not, but it's, it's, they just seem really, really weak. Other than the fact that it was so loud, the Vitamix with the main pitcher on it did really well in all of our blending tests. However, we did do a test to warm up soup in it because they do advertise that you can do that with this thing. That we could have actually done stovetop a lot quicker. And you couple that with the fact that this Vitamix is so unbelievably loud, it was really difficult to listen to it for that long. At the end of the day, the Vitamix E320 is a very powerful blender. It's made in the USA, which I love, and it's got the best warranty I've ever seen. But I was really surprised to find as many weird, janky things as I did. Honestly, I was expecting this to be close to perfect, especially considering the brand and reputation. But honestly, what we ended up with feels a little cheap. And at 399 bucks, that is pretty disappointing. Now tack on the fact that if you're not getting this from Costco, then you're not getting that deal. Then you're going to be paying over $400 just for the blender. But in my opinion, you could spend way less money elsewhere, get more features, and surprisingly, probably get a little bit better quality too. But if you've had a better experience with Vitamix recently, let me know down in the comments. It's entirely possible that we got some weird janky unit for review, but the jury's kind of out on that. If you'd like to learn some more about Joe's Phenomenal, you can watch a couple more of our videos or you could check us out online at joesphenomenal.com. We thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to check out our video. Once again, my name's Joe, and I hope you have a phenomenal day. Take it easy.